So, value number three, prioritization. Here Solomon is telling you, prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. Let's look at it. Let's look at what he said. Fascinating for someone who said this 3,000 years ago. I'm still blown away. When I, when I read Proverbs, even now, I'm still blown away by this. So Proverbs 24, 27, um, chapter 24, verse 27. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready, comma. After that, build your house. Fascinating. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. How brilliant is that? I mean, Solomon is telling people 3,000 years ago, hey, go and get your fields ready. Go tend those sheep, you know, those cows, milk those cows, get everything. Then you worry about your house. So I call this LCL. Luxuries come later. That's what I call it. Prioritize first. What's important? Now, when I look at a business, so I've been coaching companies now for, for a long time. And when, I, when someone comes to me with problems in their business, I know this, one, one of the things is this. They did not prioritize marketing. Marketing is everything in the business. Marketing helps you generate inquiries. And from those inquiries, you convert them into customers. And from those customers, you market again and get them coming back again and again and again. And then when they do come back again and again and again, you make them buy more and spend more. So there's a lot of stuff here. But marketing is everything. Marketing is everything in the business, but it's not prioritized. They often prioritize other things. You could be prioritized renovations in the company or buying new computers or, or whatever it is. But in important things like marketing should be the number one priority in a business. It's everything in a business. So, so my question to, to all of you is this. Are you prioritizing what's important in your life? That's number one. Second, are you prioritizing what's important in your week? So in order to you, for you to achieve the goal that you've set for the year, you've got to prioritize your monthly objectives. So you've got your one-year goal. Now you've got your prioritized monthly objectives the objectives that you need to meet in order to meet the goal. And once you've prioritized your monthly objectives, you must prioritize the weekly objectives so that you meet the monthly objectives. So if you achieve all these objectives each week, then you will meet the monthly objectives. Then you've got to prioritize your daily tasks. Every day, your top six by 6 p.m. What are the top six tasks that you must finish by 6 p.m.? No matter what, everything else can wait. You just got to finish your top six tasks by 6 p.m. every day, Monday to Sunday, Monday to Friday, or Monday to Sunday. And when you did that, and you do that, what would happen? So if you prioritize your top six tasks by 6 p.m., guess what? You're now getting your weekly objectives done. And you prioritize these weekly objectives, you're getting your monthly objectives done. You prioritize these monthly objectives, you've got your yearly goals. And you prioritize your five, six years of goals, you've got your seven to 10 years of vision achieved. And that's how you do it. So Solomon is onto something. And, and I, I found it absolutely brilliant that Solomon spent time talking about this. So that's value number three, prioritization. Now, we'll go to value number four. This one's a nuclear power. This one's amazing. Value number four is partnering. What do I mean by this? Proverbs 15, 22. Without counsel, plans fail. But with many advisors, they succeed. Solomon is hinting at a nuclear power in business today, and that is that of partnering. The age of the individual is over. The age of the individual who's trying to go out there and be successful, it's over. It's now the age of the team. We're in the age of the team, and if you're still trying to do things on your own, you're going to be behind. You want to work with teams. You want to partner with people, partner with businesses. Business and business are partnering. So one of the things I did many, about 10 years ago, actually, so 10 years ago, I partnered with this new radio station that had just started. There were nobodies that time. And the station is called BFM, BFM 89.9. So when they had just started, roughly about three months or so after they started, I partnered with them and I started doing radio shows. Back then, it was every Fridays at um, 11 o'clock. Now my shows are every first Monday at 10 a.m. So every first Monday, 10 o'clock in the morning is my show. So I partnered with BFM and I started giving some incredible shows on business for people. And, and BFM loved it and, and I just kept doing it. Over the years, guess what happened? Huge numbers of businesses started learning from my shows and started loving it. And, and I started exploding forward into the marketplace. And because of this partnering, more partnering came in. 
magazines, newspapers coming in to see me to, to write articles. I did a TV show with Astro for two years. And again, I kept looking at partnering. Every time someone worked with me, I look at distance, long distance with this person. If I'm going to work with someone, I would look at how, how long I can work and how well I can work with this person. My own auditors, my company secretary has been with my company for 20 years. I've been partnering with them for 20 years. Can you imagine that? So partnering is absolutely critical. And you've got to ask yourself this question, who are the people or the companies that I can partner with for the long term, for the long haul, in order to achieve my goals? And in the process, help them achieve their goals as well. And this will change everything for you. Because see, we have entered the age of the relationship. And we're in the relationship age now. It's all about relationships. And partnering will get you everywhere. And, and that's why you find businesses are constantly doing the corporate word for partnering, which is joint ventures. So they're doing joint ventures. In the past, if you go back in the 80s and the 70s, it was about mergers and acquisitions which buy you out. Now it's about joint ventures. It's about striking deals with each other. And they're doing that. So, so you've got to ask yourself, in my business, if I want to explode forward, how can I partner? So let me give you an example of partnering. Let's, and this is something I did many years back. I had a hair salon client who was struggling, struggling to grow her business. So what I did was I got her to partner with a beauty salon, a ladies only beauty salon. And here's what we did. We offered the beauty salon um, customers a free haircut. We picked the days where, where it was um, the worst days of the week for her, where there was hardly any customers coming in. And we used those slots and we gave free haircuts to any of the customers of the beauty salon. Guess what happened? She was crammed with customers. A whole bunch of people from the beauty salon came over. So the beauty salon lady absolutely loved this deal, saw, saw her being flooded with customers. She did the same thing. So she partnered back and she now offered free facials to the hair salon customers. Now, some people say, yeah, but people just take a free haircut and they run for their lives. Well, that's true. So out of every 10 people, we notice at least half would take the free haircut and they run for their lives. But then, here's what happened to the other half. The other half that stayed on would spend on average of about a thousand ringgit a year with the salon. And the salon made thousands and thousands and thousands, all because of partnering. You see, so you could partner with anything. You just find businesses that have similar target markets as you have and are non-competing, you don't compete with, and you partner together. A florist can partner with a printer. A lawyer can partner with, a, with an insurance agent. And so on and so on. It can be company to company as well. And it can even be as a team. If you, if you work in a team, say you have five um, real estate agents working together, and instead of individually competing with each other, all five can partner together, can, can put, put in a pool of money and run exhibition booths and stuff like that and go and, and, and target mar market segments together. For instance, let's say they want to target doctors. So they can go as a team and to a hospital and open up a booth and target the doctors in that place. So there are many things you can do when you actually understand what Solomon's trying to tell you with partnering. So that's value number four. So now we go into value number five.